injection. Yes, sir. Let's no. move back. Okay. Baba, Jesus' name. Everlasting Father, we give you the glory, honor, power, and majesty for the wonderful thing you have done for us this morning. We thank you because you are great. You are great. You are great. That's why that's, that, that man says, he said, you are great. Yes, you are. Oh, Lord. You are great, oh, Lord, in everything. Your word is powerful. You are mighty in battle. 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 You are gracious in battle. Thank you, Father, because you are God. Father, we want to go into your world. The world we want to talk about today is a critical matter, which we need, we need you to speak out. We, we want you to speak out in your power. We want you to speak out in your spirit. We want you to speak out in your gracious anointing. In Jesus' name, and open the might of people, the sense of people, the right art of people to listen to the word and to understand, to understand the mystery of the word of God. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. By the special grace of God, we want to treat a talk about a topic that is critical. Why I say it's critical is that it's happening everywhere. It's happening in the life of a sinner. It's happening in the life of a pastor. Not even a pastor. Many pastors in the whole world. It's happening in the life of Christians. Even the president is happening in their life. Even the governor is happening in their life. We want to treat that. I want to treat that. Uh, uh, that uh, message now. And if you have any message you want, you, any question you want to ask, be free to ask. Now, the message, the thing, the topic of the message we want to talk about today is wife. Wife. Let every man listen to this so that they can pass this message to their wife and everyone that hear this message, let it go throughout the whole world. Make sure you share this message to everybody. Everybody you know, whether you are married or you are not married, make sure you share it. If you are not married, you are not married, this message is also for you so that you can learn when you get married. And when you are married, this message, is also importantly for you. Wife. Hallelujah. You see, the topic we are about to treat is a critical case that is making God to be sad every day. Wife, listening to what I want to say. Women have become a critical problem in their family. I'm not referring to a sinner I know. I'm also referring to Christians. Let me say I'm talking to a Christian. Women, wives, they have become a critical iron rod of hindrances to many homes. They have become a problem into ministry. They have become a problem in the life of their husband. Listen very well. They have become a problem in the church. Women, wife. Wife have been a hindrances to prayers of their husbands. Wives have become a problem in the ministry of many ministers of God. Many wives have, auto, have, have, have successfully bring their holiness pastors and husband into hell because of their attitude, behaviors. Because of 
because of their behaviors. Many strong Christians have fallen into sins. You will see a pastor who is preaching a holiness message start beating his wife, slapping and beating up the wife, and still cover up and come back to the church and preach. Because of you, his you wife. Many pastors have become a drunkard, a smoker. They go back to their vomit, they both go back to sin. Because the wife they carry in in their house is a problem to them. And this wife used to claim they are Christians. But they are not a Christian, but a devil incarnate. Listen to me, everybody here. Every soul here listening to me very, very well. Wives, wives, we know that there are wives that are very good, but they are very few. We know that there are wives that they are very, very good in attitude, in behavior, but they are very few. Out of 100, you will look around, you will only find two. Yes, I said two. You hear me right, I said two. Some people claim to be Christian and they're quiet, but when you follow them to their house, the way they talk to their husband, the way they do to their husband is so devilish. That the husband will be even be thinking, I remember there was this, my, 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 my one of my, 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 uh, my, 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 my is, 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 is a pastor. Is a pastor sent from God. This man of God was so strange that he suffered for the gospel. But he was unable to eat the fruit. He became dumb. He became very dumb. Before he became a pastor, before he, became, he was just a Christian, he would have died at that age. This man was a very gentle man that he, did, he didn't know how to beat his wife. He didn't know how to treat the wife bad. And the wife he takes into his, in, into his house, he, 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 he makes life miserable. He makes life miserable for him. And the man was about to kill himself. He has tried his possible best. The man owed a knife. The man owed a knife to kill himself when my own father came in and owed his hand. He, the war, he was about to shoot it when my father rushed in and owed it. And the man began to cry and said, please let me die. Let me tell you something. What did the Bible say about why? Before I start talking, I'm, I'm just, this is just an intro of the message. Intro. What many pastors are facing, you people did not know. Well, many Christians are facing you people did not know. That's why you will just hear that one pastor fall into fornication with somebody, fall into adultery with somebody, fall into this and this with somebody, for uh, he was doing this and that. Because you never know what they are facing. Many of them, they fell and passed life from their own. Many of them, they fell and fell out of grace, out, out of their own, the way their wife related to them. You see what? What did the, God say about women? Probably I will talk about man later, but let me talk about women today. What did the God said about women? Open your Bible. To the book of First Peter. Chapter three. Verses one.
to uh, is either Sister Fumi or Brother Friday. You can open so that you can read from where you are. Verses one to six. I'm coming before you read. Yeah, you can read. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection. Wait. Listen to me very well. To your husband, not to your father. There is a place where they say children. Listen to me. This is a deep teaching you have to understand. What? Be in subjection to your husband, not to your pastor. Eh? Not to your boss in your working place. Not to your own even father. There's a difference between wife and children. The Bible says children. I'm not saying that you should not subject to your wife, husband, uh, father or mother, but your husband's commandment should be more priority than your father and your mother. The reason is because the the order and the, the order and the power of the order has been changed and have turned around and be changed to another hand. The power the father and your mother is having over you has been placed to your husband. When your father was saying, today I gave this my wife, my, my, son, my, my daughter to you, and they hand over the daughter to the man. That authority has been given to that man, and the man has hold it in his hand. He said, you wife, be likewise, be in submission to your husband. What is the meaning of subjection or submission? According to dictionary, let us look at the dictionary. Everybody, anybody that has dictionary there, you can please open it. I want to look at the dictionary from the book, from the, from my distance here. Subjection. But I know the meaning. Subjection. When they say somebody subject, sub, subject. Now, he said the art of bringing something under the control of something else. The state of being subjected. Subjection means, let me tell you the meaning of subjection. Subjection means, let me adjust a physical example. Subjection means there is a chair. The chair I'm sitting on now. This is a chair. Subjection means, I want me, I want to subject this chair. Subjection means I sit on this chair. I sit under it. I control where the chair is going to be. Are you with me here? Yes. I control where the chair is going to be. I turn the chair around. If I decide, I break the chair. If I decide, I say, Shia, you are sitting outside today. It means that subjection means a art of me able to control it. The chair was not think that I'm the one that is cheating, the, uh, cheating him or her, cheating her. The chair must not think that I'm the one that is treating her bad. The chair must be able to stand like, let me say something. The, it might be somehow hard. What the Bible is saying that a act of you becoming ah, a 
Okay, let me say, you are a car. And the husband is the driver. Wherever the husband drives the car on, he, he has set. That's exactly who women are. Yes, continue. That if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Listen to what the word of God says. There are things that God will never judge the husband over. God will never judge the husband because. There are things that you think that because of you and your husband have quarreled that you think that God uh, will judge the husband and this is. And that thing that God will never judge the husband over it. God will keep on beating you and judging you. Before God we judge the husband, God will first or first look at the case of two between. God has made husband the Lord over the, the wife. And he has commanded a woman to submit and subjected to the order of the husband. In the olden days, it were not so. In the beginning of the creature, it was not, it were not so. The creature, when God created heaven and the earth, and he created Adam, when Adam was in the garden, there was the fruit of this even there. Adam never for once been deceived to go there and eat it. Adam was never for once have the audacity that said, I want to go and eat the forbidden fruit. Never and never. He has never done it and he will. He won't do it, even if he was the only person there. He has created a hatred to that fruit, the forbidden fruit. He has created a bad intention for that forbidden fruit. So he never for once said he wants to go to that fruit and eat it. So when God not created as that, this man was the only man in the garden. Let us create him a woman. And when God created Eve, Eve came into the garden. They were together. In those days, they both have the same equality right. Though God, God knows that women are supposed to be under submission of the husband. But God just keep that secret within himself. He did not talk. God allowed them to have equality right. That was whoever the wife tell the husband, the husband did. Was whoever the husband tell the wife, the husband obeys. They both have the equality right. But something happened. Something strange happened. When God, when Satan see that, oh, I see, if I must take these people, let me pass through the wife, because wife, women are weak vessel. And Satan go through the woman and tempted the woman to eat the fruit. And when the woman eat the fruit, he also tell the husband to take it. Don't forget that God has given both of them equal right in those time, in that time. Not because Adam did not know what he's doing. Not because Adam did not know what is right. But Adam and Eve were into equality right in those times. So, and the love Adam had for his wife was so great. And Eve said, my dear, eat this fruit. It's a command. It's a request and command. And the husband said, okay, because we are both uh, husband and wife, let me obey. By the time Adam eat, the fall short of the glory of God. The glory of God disappeared in their life. They became naked. They became stinky. They became dirty. And in that kind of case, Adam fall from the grace. By the time God came and saw that the way it is is not 
the way it is supposed to be, God condemned the woman and caused the woman that are from today, they shall have a hard labor whenever they want to give birth. And uh, he said to, to them, he gave them another cause that are uh, from today, your art will always be in your, you, you, you always be for your husband. Now, listen to me. Because of this, God take the authority from the woman and give the complete authority to man. Today, I will let you know the reasons why the church the uh, Paul, Apostle Paul, never allowed woman to speak in the church. This is the exact reason why Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul get the mystery and the reason why it was uh, what happened in the beginning of life. And he commanded that let no woman speak in the church. That he said, let no woman speak in the church. So he said it in those days in quality, because the women of the quality were controlling, trying to prove like they are somebody. So man should take control of the church because of their wise intelligence. Women as are not really so wise like that. They were corny, but there are some that are very wise. But I'm talking to women generally, the wives. Now, I am not talking about women's alone. I'm not talking about wife. What is the commandment of God concerning wife? Let me read that same verse that uh, Brother Friday is trying to read for us in the scripture. I will read it to wife and tell you why many women will not make heaven. It has been seen that you have been hearing it for long, that women are, are much, wives are much in air fire. I will tell you reasons. First Peter chapter three, verse one to two. Uh, the same verse that the brother read, I will read from good news. In the same way, you wife must subject, no, he said the same way you wife must submit yourself to your husband. So that if any of them do not believe God's word, your conduct will win them over to believe. It will not be necessary for you to say a word. You see this? It will not be necessary for you to say a word. Because they will see how pure and reverent your conduct is. They will see how pure and reverent your conduct is. Uh, this version, I will read it and let you to understand very well so that you can read the King James and the goodness together. Brother Friday, can you please repeat that verse so that I can interpret it for them very well? Likewise, ye wives. Likewise, be, wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. Be subjected not to another man's husband, but to your own personal husband. Yes. That if any obey not the word. That if anybody of them, only of your husband is a sinner. So this is my husband is a sinner. That's why I did not obey. Him. If any of your husband is a sinner. He did not obey God's word. Anybody that compromised, I mean, they, 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 they compose as uh, he did not obey God's word. It means he's a sinner. He's an unbeliever. Yes. They also may redoubt the word be won by the conversation of the wives. He said they also, they can repent and say, ah, oh my God. Let me repent because of my wife. Listen to me very, very well, ye wife. Wives, listen. The Bible shall be in subjection. Subjection means a husband is a king. Why the wife is a queen? You know, the, our dialect says, Oba balo yung bugu. 
it means that kings is over all things. If he feel like he said, okay, you will my build my house. I want to turn this village to another thing. All the villagers will say, Kabesh, yo, may you live long, king. King, oh, may you live long. The king has power to do anything. That is exactly the place God has placed a man. He has not placed a man in the area whereby you will be nagging on the man. You will be nagging. You will be complaining on him. You will be talking anyhow on him. The Bible even commands you to respect your worldly husband. The version this pattern said, he said, in your pure and reference, who do you reference? Reference means a highest honor you can give to God. A too much reference. There is only one place the Bible used reference for, and it was using it for God Almighty, reference. And that's why you see many pastors using reference, and I say anybody bearing reverend is going to hell irrespective of who you are. Anybody being reverend, reverend this, reverend this, is going to hell. Whether you are calling, the most worst of all is that they will be calling themselves reverend father. Ah! 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 Calling yourself reverend father, you are in trouble. Try to bear the name of God, almighty. So the Bible was saying the woman should reverence his husband. Even though she said, I remember was there was a Christian woman. Listen to me, oh, look at the example God wants you to live. If you are living with a sinner's husband, it, and that sinner's husband is maltreating you anyhow, slapping you, beating you up, using cake on you, not giving you food, this is what God said you should do. He said, reference him, obey him, respect him in the way of God. And in so doing, your husband will repent. It's not by prayer. He said, ah, let me pray for my husband. Prayer alone cannot do it. Your attitude, your behavior will do other things than prayer. Aya, because God has created conscience to every man on earth. Your behavior will give him a act attack conscience, not the way you behave anyhow. Let me tell you, forget that you marry a pastor. Um, this is a, I know many, you know, many men are looking at me, but I want to tell you the truth. Forget you marry a Christian. Forget your pastor and your husband is this and this. I'm not inviting to anybody, but when I was asking God that Lord, what should I teach today? He was telling me to teach about women, wife. So if I'm talking, I'm talking generally. Forget that my, my, my husband is a holy Christian. In fact, he's a worker in the church. He's a usher. This usher is a Bible study teacher in the church. Oh God, he know how he, he live only. If you slap him in the right eye, yeah, uh, right seat, he will just turn the left like this, and you slap it again. It's very gentle. If your attitude are bad, this man can fall into sin and committed the worst thing ever. There was a woman that I hear a story. This woman is a Christian, pure Christian. Christian is written over her. Listen to me very well. Christian is written over her. Christian. Christian is written over her. He married a man that is a sinner. The time he married, the man was a sinner. He was a sinner that time. So he married a man that was a sinner. He gave his life to Jesus Christ. He, and God was so miraculous, he started attending a holy church where the pastor was telling them to submit to their husband and never to go against God's will. 
where the pastor was able to preach and define the meaning of submission and subjection to the husband. And the woman got the message right and right. And one day, as he began to live a holiness Christian, the husband called and said, woman, come here. When do you start wearing a skirt that is big? When do you start to stop uh, using the ring that I buy for you and the chain and the, uh, the powder I buy for you? When do you stop it? See how you are, you just, you just comb your hair, you don't fix it, you don't plate it, you don't tell anything. See, why, when do you stop, start using it? And the woman said, my husband, I have given my life to Jesus. And Jesus did not want me to start using all these things. Please permit me to serve God. And the husband said, you are a madman. You are a mad lady. You are a mad lady. You are a mad. You are, you are very mad. You are mad on your head. Did you see many pastors, many, many, many pastors' wives using your ring? Ah. Did you see many churches allowing your ring in their church? Is it not the same Bible they are carrying? And the wife said, ah, my husband, this pastor, we are doing this. They are disobeying the word of God. The Bible says we should not use your ring and those and that and those. And the man said, you don't know what you are saying in your head. Your head is not correct. If I go and start using bone shot now, the lady did not obey him. And because of that, the man began to misbehave. He will stay outside. He will come in the midnight. By the time he comes in the midnight, listen to me very well, oh. By the time he comes in the midnight, this woman will cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. And God keep on encouraging him. Ah. Well, the time he come, he, the husband came in the, in the midnight, already drank and drink beers. Uh, ah. Where is my food? Ah. He will vomit all the the, the the alcohol, the wife will still be the one to pack it and clean the husband. Sometimes the husband will just say, where is my food? Uh, uh, uh. And the wife said, hey, I have cooked for you rice. I want to eat this, not rice. He will just carry the rice and pour it in her face. And the wife's rice will pour all over the body. The wife said, yes, sir, yes, sir, sorry, sir, sorry, sir, so, 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 sorry, sir, sorry, sir, I, I, I will go and prepare it, sir, I will, go, I will go and prepare it, thank you, sir, sorry, sir, you will go and prepare rice in the time of 12 o'clock in the midnight, by 1.30, the, uh, prepare uh, beans, sorry, prepare beans, by 1.30, the beans will have been done, he will bring the beans, he will say, dear, daddy, daddy, I, I, I bring the beans, who asked you to bring this? I said, I'm not reaching bees. I want to eat Gary. Ah, you, you, you asked me to, to, to cook a piece. When you came, I brought a rice to you and you put the rice on my something. And uh, you asked me to cook beans and I, I, I cook beans. You said you are not eating beans that it's Gary that you want to drink. Are you questioning my order? Are you questioning my order? Pa! on the face. The woman will cry. Bring me Gary now. And the woman said, yes sir, yes sir. You bring the Gary. This man keep on doing it every day. There are times that this woman have the only last soup she had. I'm telling you true life story, true life. It's not a forge or it's not a movie. It's a true life story. There was a time that this woman asked the only last soup at home and he gave it to her husband. And the husband asked him, asked her, he said, you, uh, what do you bring here? Rice and beans. I'm not eating rice and beans. 
at the time of 1.30 in the midnight. I'm not eating rice and beans. I wanted to eat but then yeah. It's not drunk. Oh. It's not drunk. He knew what he's doing. I wanted to eat but then yeah. A woman said, ah, sir, the last clinical, the last soup we have is what I put on the rice and beans. And I don't know you are not going to reach this rice and beans. And there's no super to me again. I said I want to eat my uh, banana. Yeah. If I, before he show, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, sorry, 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 sir. He went and go and uh, they have yam, he start cooking yam. You know now, you know what it takes to cook for the yam. He went ahead to go and start knocking doors. Please, do you have pepper? Please, do you have, uh, you have uh, okra? He start going around in the midnight, start cooking. Please, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Do you have pepper? He said, wait, it's my, it's my husband want to eat uh, okra and pepper. It's a life story. This husband was there. He know there's no soup and he intentionally do it. And this woman was able to cook that night by four, by four or five, four thirty, the husband eat the pounded yam. But behold, for many years that this woman has been enduring, by the time he was eating the pounded yam, something began to talk to him. He began to talk to him. And the man began to feel bad and said, ah, see what I have made this woman to pass through. And when he got to his friend, he thought his friend also encouraged him to be doing it. But when he talked to that same friend, he said, my wife today, this is what I did to her. And this woman went ahead and cooked that pandemia for me. And he, he explained to the friend, and the friend said, ah, this is woman. And the man came back home and he said, please, which church do you say you are going? The wife said, I'm going to holiness power ministry. Holiness power ministry. Where is the place? He said, uh, it's around that, uh, he began to, he said, I want to follow you to that church. Ah, to church, you are going to church? He said, yes. I want to go there. I want to know that pastor that is teaching you all these things you are doing. I want to know the pastor. I want to follow it today. Um, the day the, 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 the man followed the wife to the church, that day the pastor preached about repentance and the man cried out with tears. He began to cry and he repented that day. As I'm talking to you now, the man is a man of God. Is a man of God preaching holiness now. This is exactly what the Bible is telling you to do. Can you do it? No. We said, I will file a divorce. I will file a divorce. That is your language. Your language is it, is it only that is married, is having a husband in this life? Am I the only one to marry for the first time? How will a man be treating me like this? The Bible says, in your conduct, in your conversation, in the sweet and in the soft world, you say, ah, yes, sir, your husband will think and repent. I'm referring to a man, a lady who has a husband, a, a worldly husband now. I'm referring to a woman who has a worldly husband now. He said, in your condo, don't say that I, because I'm a Christian, my husband said I should not go to church. No husband can tell you should not go to church, so go to church. But you have to make a behavior that will please his God, that when God sees you, you are doing it. He will say, truly, you are my daughter. And that's why the Bible said, if they slap you in your right hand, here, yeah, uh, six, turn your left. This is for the worldly woman, uh, for the worldly husband. Now I want to talk about a Christian. Open your Bible. Brother Friday, can you please continue to read it? Verse 2. Yeah. Why they behold your chest 
conversation coupled with fear. Yeah. Verse three. Yeah, continue. Who's adorning? Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair. And of wearing of gold, or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Listen to is, read that verse four again, brother. Uh, brother Friday, don't be fast too much. Read that verse four again. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Hidden man. You see, your beauty is not what God is looking for. You see, God is not interested in your beauty. God is not interested in the way you serve him. You, you know, you praise God, you do this. No, 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 no. That does not qualify you to be a good wife. Your husband said, go and buy me something in the market and you go. That is not the original one. Yeah, what did the Bible say in verse 4? But let it be the hidden man of the heart. The hidden man inside you. Yes. In that which is not corruptible. Aha. Uh -huh. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. The ornament, you have to put on the ornament of meek. What is the meaning of meek? The meaning of meek means humility. Mm. Too much humility. You see, the when you say meek. Make make means there is a, a, a higher statement more than humility. When they say humility, the humility is too small, it's too you know, it's still when you say you make make means I you you put yourself too down, you lower yourself, it's as if you are nobody, you humble yourself to the core, you are so good, you are so wonderful. You are so humble. Yes, he said in the quiet spirit. You are so quiet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Your mother said, won't you talk? He said, I will talk. But I want you to finish before I talk, sir. Very quiet. Listen to me, every woman here. If you are not having that kind of quality, a quiet quality, a meek quality, you are going nowhere to heaven. Nowhere. Mm -hmm. Not my word. No way. Continue, brother. Which is in the sight of God of great price. In the sight, it's not in the sight of man, but in the sight, God will be looking and say, oh God, this woman is a wonderful woman. Ah, uh -uh. you are qualified to make heaven. In the sight of no man, it's not in the sight of a pastor, not in the sight of your husband family, not in the sight of your own family, not in the sight of your own husband, but in the sight of God is a great value, greatest value. Yes, sir. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God. Hey. Continue. Adorned themselves. Be yes, in subjection unto their own husbands. Hey, yes, continue. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, uh -huh. calling him Lord. He called him Lord. Laiba Kariama no machine pa. Karima se He called Abraham Lord, my Lord. You know the meaning of Lord now. He called Abraham, my God. He da kakura batande se ki ambala ba. Me kruushi mba pa pa kwa kapusi handa ba. Mi raponde pa. Takusa hi. He called Abraham, my Lord. This is what the only saint, the only women of those they did. They were quiet. They were holy. They were righteous. They were so humble. Brother, read that verse 4 to verse 6 again. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Yeah. In that yeah. which is not corruptible. Aha. 
even the ornament of a make and quiet spirit. Oh, which, yes. Which is in the sight of God of great price. Of great price, yes. But after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, be in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Ah! Calling him Lord. Calling him Lord. <laughs> calling him Lord. Are you woman doing that? Calling him Lord. And you want to make him calling him Lord. Eh? Calling him Lord. And you wanted to make heaven. How will you make heaven? Tell me. How will you? Tell me how you are going to make heaven. The Bible says this is how the only, only women of those days. Only women of those days. They pay homage. They pay respect. They pay submission. They submit. They subject to their husband. Even our mother, the person God has chosen to be our mother in heaven, which is Sarah, the person you women are supposed to be using as an example of faith, you rather leave your mother and start using one woman, woman in your street, which is disrespecting his, his husband, her husband. You start disrespecting your husband. He cannot even have authority. If you talk 10, you will talk, you will talk 20. If you take two, you will talk five. If you say eight, you will say B, C, C, D, E, F. You will talk five. And you want to make heaven. You can't make okay. heaven. It's not a cause. It's a reality. Calling him Lord. He said what? It's a reality. The Bible says our mother, our spiritual mother, our spirit mother, the person God has made a covenant with to be our mother, which is in heaven, who we ought to make and you know to, to, to follow his example. He was calling our husband Lord. Lord, calling him Lord. He bowed at our husband's feet and worshiped him as God. When he's going to, when he's giving her husband food, he will give her husband two, three, four, five meat. He will take one. He do make an equality. When he offend, she offended her husband, she will say sorry. Calling him Lord. Even when the husband is making wrong, even, even, even when the husband is the one that is mistaken, he will still go and meet and say, my husband, I'm so sorry. Call I make him Lord. Oh. He's the husband that is 40, oh. He says, find the person, oh, she is he's your husband that is 40. He will still go and beg the husband. But you, you will do younger. This is your hand. And you are saying, God knows that. God will judge with judgment. You are calling judgment of God upon yourself, aching a aching a, 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 a ice, ice fire. Let me say, go fire on your own head yourself. Are you following the Bible? No. The Bible says respect your husband. Calling him Lord. Give respect to him. Well, you never did. You are rather looking for your right, saying that I'm the one that is right. God never said the husband should respect the uh, to pay uh, to, to subject to the wife. He said, husband, love your wife. There are love, there is an area what to, maybe tomorrow or, or I think tomorrow I will talk about husband. I will tell you where husband is also having his own fault. Well, let us talk about woman today. Wife, wife, your word is like a fire that can kill a man. Your word is like a sword that can persist the act of man. 
When you speak a word to a man, that man can go extra mile to go and commit suicide. If somebody else abuse a man, he might overlook it. But let the wife abuse the man, it will pain him to the death. It will pain him so much. Yes, sir. Because your wife, because he has loved you. He has loved you. He provides everything for you. How will a man to love you and, and you still do something that makes him very bad? And you say you want to make it, you are going nowhere. Do you know that as your husband is angry with you, God is also angry with you? But you never know. Because no pastor tells you that. Because they hide the truth from you. You never know. You never know. You never know. My sister, you are listening to me very well. Hear me and open your ear to hear me. You have been hearing, maybe I don't know, maybe you have been hearing that most of all that God has taken to heaven and God has taken to air. We used to see men in heaven. Out of one million men or one hundred thousand men, we only see one lady, one woman passing. Women are so few in heaven. Do you know why? It, there's no reasons they are going to air because of one thing, husband. They refuse to be humble. And God is judging them so strictly. The house they have made in heaven has been destroyed and been dismantled. Their reward has been given to another person. Their blessing has been taken away. Because they refuse to be submitted. Not submitted to the things of the sin that your husband asks you to do. If your husband asks you to commit a sin, don't obey. That is not what God is saying you to do. He's telling you to submit to your husband in godly way. After God, it is not your father and your mother. After God, it is not your uncle. After God, it is not your brother. After God, it is not your box. After God, it is not your boss in your working place. After God, it is not your pastor. After God, it is your husband. It is your, your what? Your husband, if you want to make heaven. Most of you, you will ask me, quarrel between you and your husband. You will go and report to your mother or your husband family. Is your mother your God? It's as if God did something to me and I started reporting God to my mother. I said, do you know what Jesus did to me today? Do <laughs> you know what Jesus Christ did to me today? You are, it's the same thing you are doing. Your husband is like Jesus to you. You are to submit to him. If he said, uh, where are you going to? Uh, sir, I want to go and visit my mother. Your own mother. If he said, sit down there. I'm not permitting you to go today. Probably next time. And you know, I said, I beg. I said, my mother, you didn't say, make I sit down. He said, I said, sit down there. Make I sit down. <laughs> I think he said, you decrease. My mother will give birth to me. Make her see that. I won't go, 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 go see her. The temple back. Make her see that. I beg you, take, take, take your husband to go. And you went ahead. And you say you are going to heaven. You cannot make heaven. You can't. You can't make heaven. You are more like a sinner who have not known Jesus at all. You are more like a sinner. That is why you are like a children to your parent. Let me tell you how you should treat your husband. You have to treat your husband like a king. When you cook, you have to, as a, or as a wife, who want to make heaven, you have to make have a, 
a, a separate plate for your husband, a separate plate, plate for your husband. Not the plate that everybody is using to eat. A separate spoon for him. A separate cup for him. And listen, the place you must find for your husband must be a bigger one. A big plate, a big one that is, see my hand. It will be like this. That when you are pouring food there, it can contain like five cup of rice. You have, I know it might be funny. You are saying, hey, which kind this is this? Yeah, that is who God has made your husband to be. Your husband is a king. You have to make it poor food there. It might be dope, but it's real. When you are pulling food, when you are taking one meat, you give your husband five meat. Five meat. It's funny, right? I know it's funny. Many of you are laughing. But it's reality. It, it looks like a joke, but it's reality. You have to treat your husband like a king. Let me tell you something. A man is a very weak man. I'm telling you. Man is very weak. If you know how to treat your husband like a king, your husband himself will treat you like a queen. I'm telling you. You will eventually later and later and later take over the kingship. I'm telling you. If a woman know how to respect a man and honor a man, even though it, it will tell a man to sit down there, a man will say, okay, my wife, because love will have covered his head. He will not know what he's doing again. He will not be like somebody who is a, uh, who is a moron, a mumu. Yes, my wife. Because you have treated him, you know, man, I say, oh, every man knows what is right. You that you are in a white country whereby woman is the one taking, taking control over man. You are in a wrong country. Oh. Bible never change. The word of God never change. You have no right to take over your con control of your husband. No right. It's a man-made law that says you must take control of your husband. The law of God says you must honor your husband. And if any man never obey this, he's going to hell. If any woman, sorry, if any woman never obey this, he's going to hell. She's going to hell. Listen to me very well. The Bible says, and Sarah called. Is husband. There are many places in the Bible that talk about it. But I'm looking at the time I think I see I've spent more than one hour now. The Bible said Sarah called his husband my Lord. Calling him Lord. He called him Lord. You know the graffiti. Do you know the heaviness of calling some, somebody Lord? Do you know what it takes to say Lord? Do you know how every respect that thing can be? Many of you said that, I, but I used to respect my husband now. Every morning I need that for him. Every night I need that for him. In fact, if he asks me, but whenever he's talking, he will talk back. You have no right as a woman to talk back. You have no, no right. If your husband is talking, what you're supposed to do is what? Eh? Oh, pull your microphone and talk. If your husband is talking, what should you do? And what should you say? Yes, Lord. Yes. Sorry. Sorry, sir. Sorry. <laughs> I will say yes, yes, <laughs> yes, my lord. I'm sorry, my lord. Ah, huh? if your husband is saying something, he's talking, he's talking. You say, ah, Yes, sir, yes, my lord, yes, sir, 
Yes, my Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, my Lord. And if he says something that is angry, maybe it's what you do is making him angry. Whether it is it's something that is very, it's, he has many or he does not have many. Because that thing that is used to a provoke man sometimes. You might say a single word that to you it is not, it, it does not matter. But to him, it matters. You are supposed to say, sorry, sir. Sorry, my Lord. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. You read that. You beg him. Sorry, sir. Ah, sorry, oh. Oh, sorry, oh. My Lord, I'm sorry. Hey, sorry. Ah, hell is this. Because if you did not say sorry, hell is waiting for you. Hey, sorry. Ah, sorry. Sorry, sir. Hey, sorry. 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 It might look like a jovial thing, but it's sincere matter. You begin to follow him. If he said, leave me alone, he said, ah, please don't let me leave you alone. If I leave you alone, I will go to hell. I'm so sorry. Because it's your husband. And you pet him. You know the best thing to pet him now. You know what his weak point is. And you will not use it. Maybe some men like to, they go much to rub your head and say, I'm sorry, eh? You rub it down to your feet. You rub it. And you rub it to the chest. And the man will do like this. Are you sure you not do it again? The yeah, I will not do it again. Sorry. And the man said, okay, let's go to the bed and finish our matter. And that ends the whole matter. And that ends the whole matter. I mean, you are laughing, but that one is not the issue. The laughing matter is not the issue. The issue of the whole matter is that you should obey what the Bible says. You obey what the Bible says. This is what is called a godly woman, a woman godly. There's something, there's a saying that a woman used to say that we said we have equal right here. No woman have equal, you do not have equal right. You don't have it. You do have it right. You don't have right. What if he came to what if he comes to a case that my husband is the one that offends me and I'm the one that offends him? We offend each other. Who should beg each other? The wife should be the one to beg the husband. Do you even expect begging? Do you expect him to beg him? Let him believe, let him have the conviction to beg him, even though he offended him. You go ahead and beg him. And do you know that this simple thing, sorry, humility, has break many homes? Do you know that? Do you know that many homes have been broken? Do you know that many women have lost their husband? Do you know that because of these little things they cannot do? Because of this pride that is inside them? Many marriage is no more existence now. Divorce people has come. Now they are now regretting. I am not, I know the husband too used to have their whole photo, but I'm talking about women today. Women learn to be godly. Women learn to be holy. Women learn to be respective. If your husband said he wants to read beans, and you wanted to read, and it is right that you wanted to read. Obey your husband and cook beans. Eat that beans. If you know you are not willing to eat beans, let him know that, please, I want to eat rice. If he said, go and cook it, then fine. If he said, no, we are eating beans together, fine. Why are you proofing support? The more you are proofing support, the more you are going to hell. I don't know, maybe you can say a powerful amen. In the name that of Jesus Christ, you women watching me, you will not go to hell. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know what? You know what? Many women have successfully caused their wife, husband to backslide. 
you have a very heavy sin in your life. Heavy sin. You need to cause your husband to backslide. Many women, their attitude has pushed their husband to go and commit adultery outside and go and start having given. Some as because of you, they ate the children they have and start thinking of having another children outside. Some because of you, they have their life is now meaningless. And do you think God is not angry with you? Do you think God is not angry with you? Some of you, some of you, the way you talk to your husband is nothing different from the way you talk to your children. You have taken your husband like your children. The way you related to him, you take him as your mate because he used to sleep with him. Is it not right thing for him to sleep with you? You not think you are you are you are now same mate. It has come to extend that you not you are wicked. You know you are so bold to tell your husband your own lord that you are you are wicked. You are telling your Jesus that you are wicked. You are wicked. I'm telling you, if you did not repent, you are going to hell. I'm telling you. If you did not repent, you are going to hell. You know this platform, Heaven and Hell platform, is a platform whereby we preach holiness. I'm so sorry I tell you this, but I have to tell you the truth. We don't lie here. We tell people the truth. Do you know that many people that God have assigned to be holiness Preacher, they are having this problem in their house. There are many wives, even you that you wanted to solve their case, you will not believe the matter. Because the way they are gentle in the face, oh God, is enough to convince you that hey, this woman is good. But let's ask them from their husband. The husband will tell you who they are. Some women have now become a husband now. Your husband have, have become a wife. Because of because they are the one. Wait, because you are the one feeding your husband. Does it mean you are the husband? Eh? Because you are older than your husband. Does it mean you are the husband? Because you are the one that is rich and your husband is poor. Does it mean you are the husband? Can't you uh, respect him? Let me tell you something. Your heaven is at stake. Your heaven is at stake. If you think nobody can control you on earth, forget heaven. You are going to hell. It means you have automatically choose hell. Your heaven is at stake. At stake. At stake. If you feel nobody can tell you what to do, you are going to hell. If you feel it, I advise you today, my beloved sisters and brothers, forward this message to every woman that is going to hear this. Oh my God. Let them hear this message and repent, or else they will be thinking that we make heaven and they will let her not make heaven. Ah, but God used to appear to me. Oh my God. There are many people God that used, used to appear to. And their name is not in the book of life. It's just calling. There are many people God used to appear to. And God, their name is not in the book of life. You better be careful. And correct your way now. I have announced the message. And I have given you the message. God is my witness. That I have preached the word. That on the judgment day, you will not say, I did not hear. That in the judgment day, you will not say, I did not hear. I stand before the throne of heaven and I announce this to all over the world to hear this. You are not equality, woman. You are just a partner. You are just a helper. 
God, the Bible qualified to be a helper. Help me. What is the meaning of help me? Help me. Do you know the meaning of help me? Common sense to tell you the, the definition of help me. Help. I'm the one God said, you are helping me and you are still controlling me. Over what God sent me. Over my matter. You are still controlling me. You help her. If you like, you don't greet Apostle Peter again. You say, Apostle Peter, hey, in fact, this message is too much. Hey, don't greet me again. I don't greet me. I'm not going to pay my tax again. If you like, don't pay your tax to me again. If you like, don't pay your offering to me again. If you like, don't pay, don't support me again. Don't worry. Go. I'm not crying. I'm not afraid. But the true message was this peace. And God is my witness. Man is like a god. Whether the man is a small boy or is a big boy, is a big boy. Whether it's a man or a young, young man or a big man, is a god on earth. The only thing you cannot obey him to do, and even though you are not obeying him, you have to use wisdom to talk to him. Listen, you cannot talk to your man anyhow. The only thing you cannot obey him to do is that you must not disobey. I mean, you must not obey him when he asks you to do something that is sinful. Maybe that thing is sinful. It's against God's will. Don't obey it. But if you are not obeying it, you have to talk to him in a quiet way. I'm sorry I can't do it because the Bible says this. God is, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Do say big, but I beg him now. You do not answer me. I beg him. So don't do it all. If you want to make heaven, you have to be humble. Pull your, your body down. Put your life down. Put everything about you down. Down, 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 down. Down. And let him be high. God has qualified a man to be God over a woman. Am I preaching? Women, am I preaching? Yes, sir. Okay, women, I'm not talking about man. Women, am I preaching? Yes, yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Am I, am I talking? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will you obey? Yes, sir. Will you yes. obey? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it unto you to obey? It is unto you to obey. If you do obey it, you are telling the certificate of heaven in your life. Because that is the word of God. And that is the reason many women are in hell. Hellfire, they are burning in hellfire. Why men are much in heaven? Many women are completely holy. They do not use their ring. They do not use uh, shame. They do not use worldly things again. They do not use many things again. But in, in that area of their husband, they are having, they are having clothes. They are having problem, and that was what lead them to hell. You will not go to hell in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you, all the viewers. My name is supposed to Peter Daniel. We are talking about today. We are talking about women, 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 women. We are talking about women, 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 women today. And it is wonderful to have you on the show. This is F1 and L Live program, which we used to do every 9 a.m. to 10 or 11 a.m. every day. Every day, except Sunday. And we used to have our service, worship service, every Saturday by 10 a.m. And we close anytime. It can be 12, it can be 1, it can be 2, anytime. But we, we start by 10 a.m. every Saturday. That is our Sabbath service, our service, our service. And we used to do a deliverance hour. This deliverance hour is meant for, if you know you are weak in one area in your Christianity life, if you know you need deliverance, if you know there's a demon attacking you, if you used to eat in the dream, you used to have sex in the dream, you used to uh, commit sins, you used to masturbate, you used to do many kind of things, you come into that deliverance hour. That one is 9 p.m. every day. That one is every day, including Sunday. 
9 p.m. Nigeria time. All this time I'm telling you is Nigeria time. So you, you calculate it with your own country time you, so that you can know. So 9 p.m. Nigeria time to 10 or 11 p.m. It's a deliverance. Breakthrough are happening. Maybe people are giving testimonies. So if you want to join us, you join us on Zoom, on Zoom, on Zoom, on Zoom, on Zoom. If you don't have our code to enter the Zoom, contact me on my WhatsApp, plus 234-81-389-66287. I come again, plus 234-81-389-66287. That is my hotline line. You can call me or WhatsApp me there. If you have any question at all or concerning the message you hear as a woman or as a man, as anything, we are still coming on the version of man. So women could have, could have, women could have said, hey, my whole, we, are, we don't talk my whole now. My husband will come too. Your whole band own is coming. Just cool down, cool down. So if you have any question concerning that, you can call me on WhatsApp. Me. My name remains opposed to Peter Daniel. Go to my YouTube, YouTube channel. The name there, you are going to type Apostle Peter Daniel. You will see me, you will see there are many people wearing Apostle Peter. So you will see my own there. You will see me wearing suit. Suit there. So you see me there, you see my picture there. Click it, subscribe to my channel, like it. So that you can be hearing, uh, you, 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 you subscribe to the, uh, you press the, the bell button, the bell one. So that anytime I post a video, you'll be able to watch it. Very two. The Lord bless you in the mind. There are many messages that are still coming out to help you to make heaven. God bless you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye for now. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.